Next Vim, let's do this. Getting into NeoVim's configuration ecosystem is notoriously difficult. <laughs> you know, we... <laughs> <laughs> we launch something about Nix in NeoVim, and it's just like <laughs> such, a, such a thick, what appears to be Russian accent. It's beautiful. Getting into NeoVim's configuration ecosystem is notoriously difficult. With so many plugins, package managers, guides, and even complete distributions out there, it can literally take weeks for someone without a configuration to arrive at a usable solution. I do, I do want to say that I am extremely Nix curious. If I could have time, Nix is like really high on my things that I, I want to I want to learn. I think Nix is truly what development should have been. And what I mean by that is that you can have the configuration effectively for your OS on a per directory level, as far as I understand. And so you can just hydrate and start things so fast. And to me, that does really seem like it because we have so much crap built into trying to make each project standalone. Like Docker is something and people develop through Docker and it's like not a good experience. Developing through, I've never heard people being like, developing through Docker is the best experience there is. No, there's like a whole bunch of crap you have to get set up. Every single one of them is just like bespoke setup. It's just not fun at all. So I would love the idea of Nix to be able to go anywhere and instantly set up. I'm not saying Docker isn't bad. Docker is amazing. It, uh, Docker is truly amazing, but it's not a great experience developing on. It's never been that great. But fear not, because if you happen to know a little bit about Nix, you can make use of the amazing distribution called NixVim. Unlike anything that we usually call a NeoVim distribution. Is NixVim, uh, was that Alta Force? Because I know he was working on a bunch of stuff when it came to uh, NeoVim and Nix. So I'm curious if this is Alta 4's kind of creation here. Distribution, NixVim comes bare bones, looking exactly the same as a regular unconfigured NeoVim. The only difference is, it's super simple to configure, only taking a couple of lines to enable most popular plugins, install and configure LSP servers, and set options or color schemes without having to do any GitHub plugin hunting. And the fastest way to begin using NixVim is to run this command in an empty directory. It will initialize an example NixVim configuration, with flake.nix responsible for fetching all dependencies, and files and config being the configuration itself. Try it out immediately simply by running nixrun in the flake directory. It doesn't include much at the moment, so let's add some options. Open the official documentation page which you can find in the link in the description, and there you will see a list of all options and plugins provided by default. This is really interesting. I actually really... I would love to see more of this because there is this whole problem with a lot of people. I mean, the problem is, is that fundamentally the people who are willing to configure NeoVim are the same people who are willing to go and understand Nix. And so the capture group of who you're actually capturing is just a subset of the people already getting proficient at Lua and NeoVim and setting everything up. And so it's like you're not actually expanding the amount of people who are interested in this subset of technology. You're actually just, just simply narrowing it a decent amount. Again, super interested though. But at the end of the day, I'm going to want my own configuration the way I want it at all points. And I'm sure there's a good way to configure this, but like every key map everything. I just wanted a specific way. I don't know if I want airline and buffer line and clang D accessions and Chad tree and all like, I don't know if I want any of those in there. Maybe I just want what I want. And I, maybe I don't want to have to configure a second layer of configuration. And so I, I get the anti argument for Nix as well. Let's start with the most important one and set a color scheme. Nix Vim is very smart. So Groovebox is a good color scheme. I loved Groovebox for a very long, long time. And then Ken Wheeler, upon seeing Groovebox, told me that I'm driving an old Buick. And ever since then, it's like hurt my emotions, okay? When someone accuses you of driving an old Buick, my grandma used to drive with us kids in a Buick and smoke with the windows up, okay? I can't be having people bringing back young childhood memories, all right? It's too painful. It's entirely too painful. Other plugins will Thanks, automatically end up to it with no extra steps required. I enabled Lua line and bufferline.nvim was included in template configuration by default. If we try to run okay. Nix run again, we will see that both of them adapt to Groovebox automatically. Now okay. let's say that we want to get some real work done ASAP and get the configuration out of the way in just a couple of seconds. In that case, we can quickly enable and install our required language server with just one line, enable completion for LSP and some other sources while we're at it, and also set some key bindings by copy-pasting this chunk of code from the documentation. See, this is one of those problems I have again, 
You know what I mean? Whenever you add a layer of abstraction, this is more just like a, just a, I'm not trying to say this isn't great. Like you're doing a good job on this product. But the thing that I always dislike is whenever you have a way to configure something and you add a layer of abstraction on top of the way to configure something, and then it requires you to effectively recreate that same abstraction. So for you to understand how Compi, because this is just Compi right here, that's all we're looking at right here. Uh, if, for you to understand Compi, you have to understand what Compi does, and then on top of it, you have to understand how this system interacts with the underlying system. And so I always feel like this is one of those really difficult kind of weird grounds that just are really frustrating because I don't know if you're really buying anything. I would much rather see this exact same piece of code and this exact same stuff, but trying to figure out a way to just do it in Lua. So that way in Lua, I can just enable all these things. You know what I mean? Uh, I use Lua to configure and have Nix just copy the file over. That's interesting. That's super interesting. So you kind of invert the process. You actually have Lua come in and generate all the Nix stuff out and then have that do all the generation. I mean, to me, that's that's even better if I'm hearing you correctly because then you get all the autocomplete and everything you need from, from Lua just without all the the difficulty. You get reproducibility. I do, I do understand you get reproducibility, but you still program stringified Lua, which I think is just really hard. I think Polar Mutex, that's very interesting how he does it, which is that. Are you still using Ansible? I'm, I'm going to rehydrate all my Ansible stuff because I really like Ansible because Ansible is kind of like this nice middle ground. And another reason why I really like Ansible is that Ansible allows you to write cross system generation. So I'm gonna generate mine. And then on top of it, I'm gonna also make sure that if I ever have to use a Macintosh, that I can also have my exact same thing running on Macintosh as I do on Linux. So it does make things nice. Ansible is a, a very amazing tool. I really enjoyed Ansible. Try it out with a file written in your favorite language with this okay. command. And just like that, we have an easy to maintain That's super cool. working setup. Do you see how statistically long that A equals five is? Now me personally, I would have chosen the bitwise not of C is equal to three. Like that, that would have been my math equation, but I appreciate his math equation. With fancy completion and error checking. We can improve it even further by including some more popular plugins like Telescope. The fact that you didn't have Harpoon. Okay, I'm over here saying how great this is and then you just you just you just do this to me. I get it. Telescope is one step more useful than Harpoon, okay? Cuz it's the fuzzy finder, okay? It's the truest introduction into things. Okay? But come on. You just you're telling me you're telling me you don't like oil.nvim and Treesitter, with each one of them having their own special options. Not just plugins, Nixlim also allows you to easily set options and globals with corresponding attribute sets. Again, this, I, I hear what you're doing, but again, how do you know how to set these things? Well, first you have to know how it's done in Vim and their names. Then you have to know how to do it with in this thing. So you have to do the, again, the translations, the double translations, especially like something like map leader, globals dot whatever. It's another map leader. For those that someone's saying, what is that? Help shift with. If you don't know shift with, it's right here. There you go. You can read about it. Any of these options you can just read about in Vim. You know what I mean? They're already available. I think the docs just explain everything. I understand the docs explain everything, but remember the docs have to explain everything that already exists somewhere else. So you have to do the, do you, you still have to do the translation. I want to set my X option to a value. All right, where is X option? Where is map leader? Is map leader in options or is it in global? You know, you have to do the thing. Where's your buffer local leader? Where's your buffer options versus your window options? What about your local globals or your global locals or whatever those, that, that, that thing, right? There's like all those, you know what I'm saying? There's like, there's a lot of things. Assign key maps by adding them to key maps list declaratively define auto commands and even set highlight groups, making tweaking your Nixwim configuration. What about functions, right? Because remember, auto commands can also take in functions. Again, that's why I'm just saying it's it's hard doing everything through Nix. I do love Polar Mutex's idea of moving more towards Lua to generate the Nix to generate your environment. I do think that that's fun, but I do like this. If you want a very simple setup, this does seem like an amazing way to do it. I think this would be a very amazing way to do it. Just as easy as Home Manager or NixOS ones. All of that is great, but what if you find some of your favorite plugins to be missing from Nixvim options? Fortunately yeah. for you, Nixvim allows you to add plugins simply by adding them to the extra plugins list, where you can even configure them straight away by using this plugin and config structure. We explored packaging NeoVim plugins for Nix in more detail in the previous Nix and NeoVim video, which you can find okay. in the link in the description. 
Basic configuration aside, one of the biggest advantages of using Nixwin for me is that your configuration can be easily uploaded to GitHub and run on any other like computer that. with Nix without polluting. That's cool. I mean, obviously finding another computer with Nix will be the hard part, but once you find a computer with Nix, so easy. Shh. Local environment. Local NeoVim configuration will be ignored this way, meaning that theoretically, multiple developers could connect to the same server with SSH and have their own development environments available to them simultaneously. Talking about local NeoVim configurations, Nixim also provides modules for NixOS, Home Manager, and NixDarwin, allowing you to install nice. and configure Nixim system wise as a part of one of these three configs. In the end, Nixvim is a niche distribution of a niche text editor. So just like Nix says itself. I love that he just said that. I mean, that 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 is aware right there. The man's aware. He just knows like, hey, this is a niche of a niche. Enjoy it. I, I'm happy you did this. I think this is probably a funner project to build than anything else because you get to learn a ton about everything. To me, this seems like a great project to go out there and try. It's a weird novelty for some and this guy's absolute a gold for others. The man's I absolutely love it. And the way it handles LSPs is genuinely so much better than the alternatives. And so now I would like to thank Gate on the Page, maintainer of Nixvim, for helping me out with some parts of this video, and of course the sponsors nice. of this video. Specifically, Hoskins, P Easy, Hoskins, not let's a go P Easy, let's go, not Uni, a nut. What? Uni, Xavier, let's go, Uni. Whom I accidentally Xavier. put in the Is that Xavier? Is that Javier? Is that Xavier? Or is that uh, Xavier? I don't know. I can never. I can never tell. Can we go back to um, not a nut? Can anyone tell me what not a nut is? Is this like hot dog, not hot dog kind of situation going on? Uni, Xavier, whom I accidentally put in the recent donations in the previous video, so I apologize. Albert C, Stefan Schroeder, oh, Magic their names. Zero Zero, Lasselus, Zero Let's X go. Mouseless, Let's go. Mathis, That's Thomas Hex Brown, Mouseless. Henning Krause. Cameron, Jaimo, Syvert, Avoid Rose, This Yeho is very friend, incredible. Uncle Simon. Look at all the support. Hey, thank you everybody that's supporting this, this guy. That's a, that's a good move. You know, for people that are and trying to make the these videos and all that. the channel previously. As usual, don't forget to check out nice our thing Discord to do. server. Leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video. Vim enjoy video Vim Joyer. Just a generous. casual Vim Joyer. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Awesome, awesome, and awesome. Yeah, I'm going to like that video. So pe some people are asking, what's the point of Nyx? What, why, why would anyone want Nyx to begin with? A simple answer to that is that Nyx allows you to have an experience in which is uniform and repeatable. Meaning that you have some sort of config, which kind of looks like that JSON-like language. It's not quite JSON. It's it's not JSON at all, but it's a, it's a functional programming language to kind of define how you set something up. And then every time you hit go, it's able to reproduce that exact set of dependencies and everything. So some things are really, really annoying. Well, Ansible is not quite the same thing. Ansible is more like how to set your system up and running versus Nix is more like it can be on a per repo or a per directory basis. And so you kind of have this, it's a much more confined way. Nix is for people who still have children, but are attracted to Arch. This is true. This, that feels about right. It is for people who are Arch curious, but unfortunately they have children and so they can't use Arch, but they want to be hip and cool still. And so they satisfy their Arch queriousness for some delicious nicks. I'm, I'm a querious Betsy, you know, I can't help it. Hey, the name. Is I could like Nyx. I really could like Nyx. And Tegan, I, th I think you I think you said that right, which is that Nyx, the problem with Nyx that I see in general is that you have to learn how to double configure. I think if, if you could get over the double configure problem, I think Nyx would be really amazing. I just always worry about double configuration. Many appreciations. Again, the name is the Primogen.